Atherosclerosis Introduction It is the most common arteriosclerotic pattern with notable clinical significance. It affects large to medium-sized muscular arteries, elastic arteries, and sometimes veins. Atherosclerosis represents the lipid-rich plaques that deposit on the intima walls. Over time, these deposits, plaques, build up, harden, and narrow the lumen of the artery. It is equal in distribution among males and females, but the black race is more predisposed than whites. Risk Factors There are two groups of risk factors associated with atherosclerosis, modifiable and non-modifiable. Modifiable risk factors include obesity, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, diabetes, alcohol, cigarette smoking, physical inactivity, trans unsaturated fat intake, infections like chlamydia, pneumonia, cytomegaloviruses, and herpes viruses. Non-modifiable risk factors include old age, male gender, stress, type A personality, hyperhomocysteinemia is due to deficiency of folate or vitamin B12 or with hereditary homocystinuria. Hypertension. Hypertension is a major risk factor for the development of atherosclerosis particularly in the coronary and cerebral circulations. It can increase arterial wall tension, potentially leading to disturbed repair processes and aneurysm formation. Smoking Cigarette smoking is another major risk factor, and it impacts all phases of atherosclerosis from endothelial dysfunction to acute clinical events, the latter being largely thrombotic. Diabetes Atherogenic effects from diabetes are related to dyslipidemia, such as elevated triglycerides, and small, dense, low-density lipoprotein particles, low levels of high-density lipoprotein cholesterol, APOB-containing lipoproteins. Elevated concentrations of APOB-containing lipoproteins are a major predisposing factor to atherosclerosis. It can induce the development of atherosclerosis even in the absence of other risk factors. APOC3. Elevated levels of APOC3 are associated with increased triglyceride levels and an increased risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Lower levels of APOC3 are associated with lower triglyceride levels and reduced risk. High density lipoprotein. High density lipoprotein particles, in contrast to low density lipoprotein and very low density lipoprotein particles, have anti-atherogenic properties that include removal of cholesterol from macrophages, termed macrophage cholesterol efflux, antioxidation, protection against thrombosis, maintenance of endothelial function, and maintenance of low blood viscosity through action on red cell deformability. Menopause. Risk increases after menopause because estrogen is protective against atherosclerosis. Low-density lipoprotein. Elevated plasma concentrations of oxidase low-density lipoprotein are associated with atherosclerosis and coronary heart disease. Role of oxidized low-density lipoprotein and atherosclerosis. Endothelial damage, alteration in vascular tone, monocyte macrophage recruitment, increased uptake of low-density lipoprotein by macrophages with foam cell formation. Induction of growth factors, increased platelet aggregation, Formation of autoantibodies to oxidize low-density lipoprotein. Pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. The most widely accepted theory in understanding the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis is a reaction to endothelial cell injury. For better understanding, let's discuss this complex process in stepwise fashion. Step 1. Endothelial damage. The first step begins with damage to the endothelium of blood vessels. Endothelial cell injury, caused by many factors such as hypertension, hyperlipidemia, free radicals, smoking, tobacco, dyslipidemia, etc. Regardless of the etiology, endothelial damage is always the first step. Step 2. Endothelial Injury Response Endothelial injury initiates an inflammatory reaction with release of cytokines and growth factors, especially platelet-derived growth factor, which causes hyperplasia of smooth muscle cells. The endothelial cells also produce adhesion molecules, vascular cell adhesion molecules, intercellular adhesion molecules, P-selectin, to allow these leukocytes to adhere to and infiltrate the endothelium. 
Step 3. Foam Cell Formation Damage to the endothelium increases the permeability of the endothelial membranes, increasing permeability to white blood cells and other fluids and lipids. As the permeability of the endothelium increases, lipids accumulate underneath the endothelium in the intima. In the intima, the lipids are oxidized and then engulfed by recruited macrophages. These macrophages are known as foam cells. Foam cells constitute the hallmark of the early atheroma. Histologically, it appears as focal thickening of the intima with an accumulation of lipid-laden macrophages, foam cells, and extracellular matrix. Step 4. Fibrous Cap As these lesions expand, more smooth muscle cells accumulate in the intima. The smooth muscle cells within the deep layer of the fatty shriek can undergo apoptosis, which associates with further macrophage accumulation and microvesicles that can calcify, perhaps contributing to the transition of fatty shrieks into atherosclerotic plaques. Fibrous caps atheromas are defined as plaques with a well-defined lipid core covered by a fibrous cap, which may be relatively acellular, made of dense collagen, or may be rich in smooth cells. Step 5. Fibrous plaque. The fibrous plaque evolves from the fatty streak via accumulation of connective tissue with an increased number of smooth muscle cells filled with lipids and often a deeper extracellular lipid pool. Eventually, the lipids react with calcium, causing calcification and transformation of the fatty streak into an atherosclerotic plaque called an atheroma. These are advanced lesions and often contain a necrotic lipid rich core and eventually calcified regions. Fibrous plaque is a pathognomic feature of atherosclerosis. It is composed of a fibrous cap and a necrotic core. Antraplaque hemorrhage. It mainly results from plaque, neovascularization, and increased neovessel permeability. It is a common feature of advanced atherosclerotic lesions and a critical element leading to accelerated plaque progression, plaque instability, and ischemic vascular events. Vasovasorum. The vasovasorum forms a network of microvessels that originates primarily from the adventitial layer of large arteries. These vessels supply oxygen and nutrients to the outer layers of the arterial wall. As atherosclerotic plaques develop and expand, they acquire their own microvascular network extending from the adventitia through the media and into the thickened intima. These thin-walled vessels are prone to disruption, leading to hemorrhage within the substance of the plaque and contributing to the progression of atherosclerosis. Complications of Atherosclerosis Three common diseases associated with atherosclerosis are coronary artery disease, peripheral vascular disease, and stroke. The complications include rupture of plaque, ulceration, and erosions, vessel weaknesses forming aneurysms or causing hemorrhage, thrombus formation, and atherosclerotic embolization. Hypertension by activating renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system pathway. Peripheral vascular diseases like claudication, ulceration, and peripheral artery occlusion, pallor, pain, paresthesia, pulselessness, and paralysis. Vessels commonly affected by atherosclerosis abdominal aorta, most commonly in the area between renal arteries and iliac bifurcation, more than coronary arteries, more than popliteal arteries, more than descending thoracic aorta, more than internal carotid artery, more than circle of Willis, least commonly affected. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.